Hey, I'm Manuela with Plitix, and in this video, you'll learn how to create, edit, and delete product attributes in Plitix. Product attributes are all the data points or the pieces of information tied to a product. This is everything from the internal technical data, like product ID, SKU, product owner, lifecycle stage, to the information needed to market and sell your products, like title, description, price, pack shot images, videos, PDFs, and so on. This is a lot of information that historically has been stored in different spreadsheets and systems. But with a product information management system like Plitix, you can bring all of this data into a single source of truth where you and your team can work on it to get your products ready for market. So there are actually two ways of creating attributes in Plitix. The first is by importing a CSV with a column header that contains each attribute name. And the second method is to add an attribute directly in Plitix. Each of these has its pros and cons. I won't go too much into the importing method since I explain how to do that in the video that I'm linking somewhere up here. Uh, but I will say that creating an attribute on import is the best method for when you already have that data for that attribute stored in a different system or in a different spreadsheet. You can import a CSV with many attributes and products all in one go. On the other hand, the second method, creating an attribute directly in Plitix, is best for when you want to quickly create a new attribute field. You can then fill in the information for your products directly in the Plitix platform, or you can import the values for that attribute at a later date. To get started, let's head over to the Settings tab. When you click Settings, you'll be taken to the Attributes area of the Product Settings menu. If you don't see the screen by default, then you might not have permissions to edit attributes, so you'll need to talk to your account administrator. To create a new attribute, click the Create Attribute button on the top left of the screen. A pop-up will appear where you'll enter the details of your new attribute. When you name your attribute, the label that's used by the system will populate automatically. And you can also add a description to your attribute, which is useful for helping your team understand what kind of information this attribute holds, or if there are any specific requirements that they need to keep in mind. Next, you'll select the type of attribute that you want to create. There are 13 different types of attributes that you can choose from. So if you want to learn more about each type, you can check out the article that I'm linking below. For this example, we'll go ahead and create a drop-down attribute. When you choose that, scroll down and you'll see a third step. Here's where you can add and remove option values to your attribute. You can toggle the sort order to sort your options alphabetically in ascending or descending order, or you can create your own order by selecting the manual options and dragging and dropping the options to the order that you want. Now, this is really cool. You know how sometimes a team member might accidentally misspell a word or create an option that shouldn't exist? We've all been there. And we've made it easier to ensure that that doesn't happen by giving you the ability to allow or restrict options that are assigned on import. So for example, if you have three options, let's say red, green, and blue, and they are case sensitive, and you want to ensure that your team isn't accidentally adding in red in lowercase or adding navy blue rather than blue, then select restrict and no new values will be added to your attribute accidentally. Now just click create attribute and you'll see the attribute was saved, which means you can start using it in the platform. If you want to change the attribute name, just click on it, type the new name and hit the enter key. If you want to change any of the options for your attribute or add something like a character limit for a short text attribute, then you can do this by clicking on the pencil icon that appears when you hover over the attribute in settings. The only thing that can't be changed is the attribute label. When you hover over an attribute here, you'll also notice a second icon appears. When you click on that, you'll see the locations where your attribute is used in Plitix. So it can be a product, a channel, a brand portal, or a product sheet. And if you click on it, it'll take you to that location. If you want to delete any attribute, tick the box to the left of its name to select it and then click the delete icon that appears at the top of the attribute area. As a security measure to keep you or anyone on your team from accidentally deleting attributes, you'll need to type delete to confirm. If an attribute is used in a Plitix channel, brand portal, or a product sheet, you'll need to remove it from these locations before you can delete the attribute from the system. For example, this attribute is used in a brand portal. So I need to go into the brand portal, 
remove it from the attributes tab of the brand portal and also remove it from within the designer if it's being used there before I can delete the attribute. Now I can return to the settings area to delete the attribute from the entire system. So now that you know how to create, edit, and delete an attribute, check out our video on how to create attribute groups, which makes finding and managing attributes quick and easy. If there's something specific that you wanna see, let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up so that we know to keep making more. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're always coming out with new videos on best practices for managing your product information in Plytics and also general e-commerce tips to grow your business.